Hi everyone. Hi, so this is Jason Pegler, CEO of Chipmunk Publishing, and I'm just here today to to give it. Um, this is the following day from the seminar, so it's the day after the seminar, and I'm just here to talk about the fee feedback really. So I guess it's my own feedback. I've read the feedback forms, and it's great. Every everyone like the everyone like the event and one person could have liked the event more and everyone else liked the event a lot so that's pretty good so it's like 90 90 odd percent really happy success rate and it was it was really good i feel i'm still on a bit of a high actually which is which is really good i feel really still feel really good about um I feel blessed really the people that i met yesterday and most of them I hadn't met before. I'd only met like two of them before. So there were about, we had about 14 people there all together. And it was, a, it was amazing. One woman, Julie, she traveled from Boston to attend the event. So that was really, you know, so 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 flattering, really, that someone had wanted to uh, travel all the way from Boston to come to the event. And in fact, I think only one or two people, what well, maybe perhaps only one person, was from it was from London. Considering we had the event in Canary Wharf, and everyone else had travelled from pretty much all over the country. We had someone from Edinburgh there. We had um, someone come from Derby. We had people from Cambridge so it was it was really good there was a really good variety and what I enjoyed really was having the opportunity to help people writing but also help them help help their state you see so help them write in a happier way and I think that's that's really important when writing about mental health is to to make sure that if you're in a if you're in a peak, a peak state you're going to write more and you're going to you're going to write happier and you're going to and be happier and it was really good to allow people to, to see people in the flow of writing and I was doing some writing myself which I haven't done for a while so that was great and then seeing everyone taking it in turns writing writing and then and I felt like we were kind of growing as a as a group throughout the day as well and people became more confident in their delivery and their writing became happier throughout the day as well so we had three writing sessions throughout the day two fairly long ones early early on and then a shorter one towards the end. And it, it was really good seeing the shorter one towards the end because we were writing comedy. We were writing, you know, there were a lot of funny things that were coming out, which was really good. And it was great to, to share the experiences with everybody and pass on some strategies that have helped me with my conquering my bipolar and we also had the conquering bipolar booklet um, just come out 16 must know techniques to conquering your bipolar but that applies to every mental illness not just bipolar so it was really good to share that and, and to go through that and to use some techniques from different people that have inspired me in personal development and you know let people know a bit about Brian Tracy and Jim Rohn and people like that but then also to test and assess the mental health empowerment technology because that's what these seminars are about really is putting these strategies in place so that the people who attend the seminars can really benefit and I launched the mastermind group and we had great interest in in that so we're following up with that and 
also um, doing a one day writing and marketing seminar that's coming up that you can all know about. So it was, the day was, a lot of, have lots of different emotions afterwards. I felt the day was, it was definitely inspiring. It was enthralling. It's the, the, my partner asked me to sum it up in one word and I said enthralling. I found it exciting, challenging, rewarding, tiring. Um, and most of all, I found it enthralling. And it did give me a real will to, to want to serve my clients more. And it helped one or two people were having been having writing blocks over the last year or two even and they were writing really really well um, we had different people there with different conditions you know a few bipolar people people with schizophrenia anorexia and it was a real group it's not as though I didn't feel like what was interesting actually when, when everyone introduced themselves in the beginning they weren't really that specific about their conditions. So, but as the day went on, it came more and more out in the writing. So I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously people feel more comfortable as, as they come along and, and writing is very personal. So people's personality comes out in their writing and their innermost thoughts as well. But I like to think as well is that because we're all there in the same boat, if you like, that it didn't feel a need to explain specifically in the beginning that each of those diagnosis course, we all knew that we had a mental health experience and we were going to share it. So, and there was a real camaraderie, a real bond with people who've never met before and who live in different places. And it was nice to see that grow. <clears throat> and we're all shaming, sharing the same philosophy of serving other people, wanting to help other people with mental illness, wanting to improve our own writing, our own experiences of writing, and wanting to serve people who've experienced what we've experienced as well. And of course, writing has different takes a different level of priority with different people. We all have different lives, we all do different things. Um, for some of us it's extremely important and really an essential part of catharsis. For others it's a hobby that we like to do every now and then. And for some of us we, we write every now and then and then don't write very much. And some of us we write something and then it opens up. It really does open up a whole can of emotions that that become unpoured throughout throughout one's life so that's why it was it was really it was really good to see how people can develop throughout the day in their writing and we can share some strategies that could help us so we got into a peak state a little bit we did it um, one two our moves. I found what I found challenging was um, it is quite emotional, you know, when people are really going through the experiences. And oh, what was really important was I didn't want anyone to dip in their mood. Now, I know from being involved in the mental health movement since 2001 it's very easy to go to a service user group or not necessarily a writing group but any service user group or conference or anything like that and it's so easy even in if you have a conference if you have if you have a chair at a conference who isn't very domineering or, or isn't doesn't manage the audience well you can have one person who 
is on a monologue about their own negative mental health experience and it can damage the entire day for everybody it brings everyone down into a low level and that's something that <clears throat> I'll never let happen at any of my seminars I just won't let it happen because <clears throat> you can feel the energy of the whole group change and that's a complete opposite of what the seminar was about so whilst it's really understand to have it's re sorry it's really important to have an empathy with people and to look at ways in which we can share each other's experiences and help each other. I quite like the intimate setting of when somebody's writing something that um, what I love is that you, I can go up and if I can read what they're saying, you know, they just whisper out. It's quite personal and sometimes like I can, I can see that um, if they just change something slightly then it'll completely change their mood and it, it, so what I, what I did was set out specific rules where by three rules so you um, start off with a happy sentence have a happy middle and have a happy ending and that's not as easy to do as it sounds and we had some great creative writing prompts um, the most popular one I think yesterday was the sun is the future's so bright I'm wearing shades, which is a great start to anything. One I enjoyed most writing was, um, it was something like, and so there is a heaven after all, and that just put me in such a good place writing that. And we went over a bit, we started a few minutes late, and we went over a bit. But that was good. I, um, I guess I kind of didn't want it to end myself. So, because it, it was just really, really nice to see people and to come out of my bubble a bit, I suppose, from spending so much time on a computer and, and reading and, and you know, thinking about technology and online marketing and things like that. So, it was just a fantastic experience, really. I think that we all got a lot out of it, and I'd like to think that there's a continuation of what we got out of it as well, and that even people won't realise how much they got out, out of it at the moment, and they'll realise in a week or two or three or four. So. I'll be keeping in touch with the people from the event and see how they, you know, see how they're doing and, you know, we're obviously going to keep in touch. And it's, it's just great, it was just, you know, great to meet so, so many like-minded people who all care about writing, they care about wanting to help other people with mental health experiences, they want to develop and grow as people and interesting to see why writing is important to them, how writing is important in their lives, what role writing plays in their lives. And also, really interesting, how they define themselves. So, how do, how do they define themselves as people? So, because the language that we use is really important to how we define ourselves and the, t the kind of lives that, that we live. So we had was one guy, for example, who was talking about, I'm a paranoid schizophrenic. And it's really interesting because if you can change the language there and say, I used to be a paranoid schizophrenic and now I am on my way to recovery then that is a different psychology that you set yourself you see it's a different mindset that you set yourself and 
like Zig Ziglar says, if you change the input, you change the output. It's just explained so well that I think. So what I'm saying is if you if you change the definition of yourself, then you'll change the life that you lead and the everyday life that you lead. And if you pick up one thing from this video, I think that that is, that is what you should pick up today, the thought of the day, if you like. So you change the input, you change the output. So when I call myself a, a former bipolar sufferer, do you think I feel much better every day talking that about myself? As, a, as opposed to saying something completely different like, um, I'm bipolar, I will have bipolar for the rest of my life. What do you think make me, makes me feel better every day? What do you think drives me to a higher place? <coughs> what do you think makes my life more filling? This is the same with, with anyone who's listening to this with them, um, who has a mental illness diagnosis, or a carer who is <coughs> desperately, you know, loves their son or daughter or partner and wants them to get better. The language that we use in connecting and describing the person that we love is just as important in def defining the way they feel about themselves as, as the way they feel about themselves, almost. Obviously, if you want to recover from a condition, it has to come from within. It has to come from within your own mind, body, and soul. But essentially, it comes from your thoughts. And because if you can alter your thoughts, you can alter your actions. And in order to order your actions, you need, sorry, in order to change your actions and alter your actions, you need to change your thoughts. And what's the best way of changing your thoughts? It's actually having a lot of vigorous physical exercise. It sounds insane, but it's true. The fitter you become, the fitter you get, and the more likely you are to change your thoughts about yourself. Then what other strategies can you use to do that? Well, there really are a lot of other strategies that you can use to really empower yourself and make yourself feel really better about everything. <clears throat> Being physically fit, as fit as you can, is so, so important. What after that one you think, well, you know, have, getting enough, having a good, good night's sleep, getting into personal development, having enough ambition where you can drive yourself to a higher place every day, finding role models that you want to push yourself towards, finding a peer group that people in your lives that push you to a higher place that don't bring you down, eating healthily, avoiding caffeine after one o'clock or twelve o'clock, avoiding it completely if you can, not taking alcohol, just or you know if you do have it very very small amounts of it and in the, not you know don't have it very often just all these common sense things that we all know about and but for some reason or other it's hard to balance them all at a time so it's quite easy in life to to get stuck in a rut and to say okay I'll do this then I'll improve one thing and then you take your eye off something else. So it might be, okay, so you get your weight down to the weight that you want to get to, and then as soon as you do that, you stop exercising. And then because you do that, then your mood isn't as good and you get a bit snappier and you get a bit more lethargic and then you put weight on again. Um, and then that affects your, you become more stressed at work. It's kind of a revolving, negative cycle but it's so easy to snap into the negative cycle because if you make sorry into the positive cycle you must get into this positive cycle because another another thing that's really important is that 
another Zig Ziglar thing actually. I'm really into Zig Ziglar this morning. It makes a lot of sense. So, the harder you work on yourself, the easier life becomes. The harder you work on yourself, the easier life becomes. That's so important. And if you think of it, because if you think of it the other way around, so the easier you are on yourself, the harder life becomes. If you just sit around thinking, yeah, this will work out, this will be easy, get that sorted out tomorrow. If you're a tomorrow kind of person, then today is always going to be more difficult. So try and take this paradigm shift, as Stephen Covey would like to call it so well. Take this paradigm shift where you're a today person, you're a now person. You set your goals every day on your mobile phone and you write them in the present tense. That's a great breakthrough when I started doing that through Brian Tracy. And I have a journal every day as well that really ha that helps me. And it's not just the happy, the happiest journal in the world. I, I say things that I want to challenge and improve myself as well. But if, if you can get to a place where you push yourself to a higher level every day and think about, just before you go to sleep as well, think about what you're going to do next the next day and write it down and your goals for the next day even. Because then when you go to sleep, um, you start realizing and acting what you're going to do while you're asleep. So you're effectively putting this, the super conscious or subconscious mind into, into place and making it, uh, so it really does achieve its maximum because you can use your subconscious mind to to help you in, in so many ways that you can imagine. And the greatest thing about it is that it's easy. You don't actually have to do anything while you while you're doing it. It's automatic. It's like being. It's like having an automatic injection of mental health empowerment, which is the ultimate mental health pill that doesn't exist yet that the GP should be giving you, but they don't want to give you this medication. So. If anyone is on medication now, make sure you liaise with a professional and get someone who treats you as a human being first and look up to come, you know, have strategies to improve your life. Because you, if you improve your life and show them that you, that you are making a difference and that you're not crazy, that you can make a difference and you can contribute to society, then they'll help you. They'll help you wean off it and you can become the real you again. So... This, I just want to say that it was it was a great seminar yesterday. Thank you everyone for attending. Sorry for those of you who couldn't make it. Don't worry that you didn't make it because we filmed the whole event. So we've got seven hours of great footage. We're going to package it into a CD and DVD program. And it will be available as soon as, as, soon as we can get it out. It will be available uh, as, a, as a product, a DVD and CD mp3 product and so you can all watch it and you can all see the people that were there and and take part in it and so that's this is jason pegler from chipmunker publishing c-h-i-p-m-u-n-k-a dot com c-h-i-p-m-u-n-k-a dot com chipmunker publishing love you lots take care goodbye and look after your mental health and that of somebody else. Look after the mental health of somebody else for one hour this week. Okay, love you lots. Bye.